This episode is supported by The Great Courses Plus. Even though we often refer to this time in history as the age of mammals, we should probably be calling it the age of insects. Because just looking at the numbers, there are way more of them than there are of us. Humans alone number more than 7 billion at this point, which is a lot. But insects? Try 10 quintillion. We may like to think we're in charge because we make the rules and, well, we're bigger than they are. But insects and other arthropods weren't always so small. About 315 million years ago, they were not only abundant, they were enormous. To meet the biggest invertebrates to ever crawl across the Earth, we have to go back to the Carboniferous period, from 298 million to 358 million years ago. That's when you'd find the likes of Meganeura. It was a griffin fly, a giant relative of today's dragonflies, that had a wingspan of about 70 centimeters. That's about the size of a pigeon, more than three times larger than the biggest living dragonfly. Meager by comparison was Stephanotypus, another griffin fly that was still some 40 centimeters across, about as big as a robin. And this greatness in size wasn't limited to insects. You see outsized arthropods all over the world during this period too, like Arthropleura. You know those cute little millipedes you find curled up under rotting logs in the woods? Now imagine one of those about two meters long and a half a meter wide, shuffling like a living carpet over the undergrowth. It was probably the largest arthropod that ever walked on land. So what allowed these invertebrates to get so big? The answer is oxygen. Take a deep breath. Hmm. Right now, the amount of oxygen in the atmosphere is about 21%, but back in the Carboniferous, it was nearly 35%. That's because the Carboniferous was a time of incredible runaway plant growth. Huge forests full of ferns, mosses, and some of the earliest vascular plants had taken over much of the planet. They sucked in the carbon dioxide and pumped out oxygen in enormous amounts. You might be thinking, Earth has a lot of trees now, so what's the difference? Well, today, that big log you find in the woods with all those bugs underneath it, that log is being decomposed by bacteria, among other things, that take in oxygen and release CO2. But in the Carboniferous, those wood-eating bacteria didn't exist yet. So Earth's giant primordial forests were taking in lots of carbon dioxide and pumping out lots of oxygen. That's what plants do. But since the trees weren't decomposing, the CO2 wasn't being released back into the atmosphere. The result was an all-time high in the world's levels of atmospheric oxygen. And that's what made giant arthropods possible. Because arthropods don't breathe the way we do. They have a system of external openings called spiracles that lead to a branching network of tubes called tracheae that diffuse oxygen through their bodies. And this puts a limit on their body size. Arthropods can only get so big before they can no longer draw enough oxygen from the air. But in the Carboniferous, the abundance of oxygen in the atmosphere made it easier for arthropods to get the O2 that they needed, which allowed them to reach record-breaking size. In fact, paleontologists have managed to make this happen today in the lab by experimenting with modern insects. By raising dragonflies, beetles, and other insects in controlled, oxygen-rich enclosures, scientists at Arizona State found that successive generations of arthropods can grow faster and larger. But of course, it's possible to get too much of a good thing. So some scientists have proposed another theory, that arthropods got huge not because they could, but because they had to. Lots of oxygen might have been beneficial for grown-up arthropods, but it also could have posed a threat to their larvae. Young invertebrates can't control their intake of air like adults can, and too much oxygen can be deadly. So researchers at Michigan State have suggested that ancient arthropods began producing bigger larvae, so they take in less oxygen relative to their body size, and those bigger larvae resulted in bigger adults. But you know enough about natural history at this point to know that even the biggest creatures don't stay on top forever. About 200 175 million years ago, during the Permian period, the world changed yet again. The levels of atmospheric oxygen started to plummet. Why? We're not sure. Ancient climate shifts might have had something to do with it, but as oxygen levels fell, the interiors of the world's continents got warmer. This shrunk the big swamps that acted as natural carbon sinks. Swamps weren't pumping out as much oxygen as they used to, and on top of that, decomposers finally appeared and were able to start breaking down all of the dead wood. As these microbes took in oxygen and released carbon dioxide, global levels of O2 dropped even more. And with less oxygen available, it became increasingly hard 
required for the giant arthropods to survive. By about 305 million years ago, the two meter long arthropleura could no longer be found on the forest floor. By 299 million years ago, the last of the Meganeura had flapped its wings. The arthropods that followed never got quite as spine tinglingly large as their ancestors were, but of course, everything turned out fine for them. Today, we're totally outnumbered, both in biomass and in diversity by insects, arachnids, and other land-based arthropods. But if there ever was a time that was a true age of insects, it was probably the Carboniferous period, when arthropods of all kinds were living large. Thanks to The Great Courses Plus for sponsoring this episode. The Great Courses Plus is a digital learning service that allows you to learn about a range of topics from educators, including Ivy League professors and other educators around the world. Go to thegreatcoursesplus.com slash eons and get access to a library of different video lectures about science, math, history, literature, or even how to cook, play chess, or become a photographer. New subjects, lectures, and professors are added every month, like the Introduction to Paleontology series taught by Professor Stuart Sutherland. In it, you can learn about everything from Earth's shifting crust to taxonomy and more. With The Great Courses Plus, you can watch as many different lectures as you want, anytime, anywhere, without any tests or exams. Help support this series and start your free one month trial by clicking the link below or going to thegreatcoursesplus.com slash eons. What do you wanna know about the story of life on Earth? Let us know in the comments and don't forget to go to youtube.com slash eons and subscribe. If you think dragonflies are fearsome, wait till you see their babies. Our friends at Deep Look filmed them shooting out their super fast mouth parts to catch a meal. Check it out here.